My name's Maz Salim and I'm the daughter of Mohammed Salim who was brutally murdered in a terrorist attack by far-right neo-Nazi terrorist and mosque bomber Pablo Lapshin. My father was walking home um, and tomorrow will be his four-year anniversary. He was walking home just down this street. This is where we live. So he's walking down this way and this is where my father was um, was stabbed to death and this is where my father collapsed just here after he tried to give chase to the attackers so um, tomorrow marks the four-year anniversary of my father and we need to address Islamophobia the rise of Islamophobia and basically uh, get active and you know try and challenge the racist rhetoric that is being pushed in the media um you were quite upset with the media coverage of your father's case. Why? Because um, we didn't hardly get any media coverage. It's one of the biggest acts of terrorism in the UK. Pablo Lapshin murdered my father within five days, stabbed him to death with a hunting knife, and then he went on a three-month three bombing campaign and put nail bombs outside a free mosque in Warsaw, Wolverhampton and Tipton. Yet to this day, the media, the government police haven't treated this as an act of terrorism, and he was charged under terrorism laws. And it was ha happened at, you know, three weeks later Lee Rigby was murdered and literally we did you know rest in peace to Lee Rigby but they did Cobra meetings they went out and out the press went mental but when it's a Muslim life it seems to not matter and when the police came to our house they told us it wasn't a racist attack they tried to play it down they played to try to play the whole case down so you know I'm campaigning um, against racism and Islamophobia and I will challenge anyone who begs to differ to what happened to our family on that night because my father didn't deserve to die like that and um, and this is all because of the Islamophobic cli climate that's being pushed in by our politicians and by the media. Um, the police did in the end admit that it was a racist and Islamophobic act, didn't they? Yes, they did eventually. Um, so, uh, you know, Pablo received 40 years and, um, um, and but basically the problem is more needs to be done because, you know, we can speak English. When the police came to our house, they said, this is not an attack, racist attack. How do you just be my mom there? You know, my mom wouldn't have com com completely, she speaks English, she understands it, but she's not fluent as us. And the police can literally walk all over you. And, and basically we challenged the, them because, you know, they were putting misinformation in the community to say it was someone in the community or it could have been one of us. You know, that's disgraceful and that's not, you're, so you're supposed to have compassion. And when Muslim lives are taken, you know, in such horrific situation, we didn't feel that com compassion from the police force. You mentioned um, the climate of Islamophobia. How do you think your father's murder um, fitted into that? And what we're seeing right now, we've got an election coming up. It's been four years since your dad's murder. Has the climate got better or worse? The climate has got, you know, sadly, it's got, you know, worse. Um, you know, unprecedented attacks across the globe on Muslim women, mainly for wearing the hijab and the garb, on elderly men. You know, Mohsin Ahmed was murdered in 2015 on his way to Fajr prayers, and he was stamped and kicked to death, um, you know, by uh, racists and Nazis and that was another act of terrorism but yet the media didn't give very little reporting to it you know we see in the rise of Marine Le Pen uh, you know if you saw the recent elections um, you know you know the, she's a Nazi and a fascist and you know she's literally got so many votes and this is very worrying then you look at Trump in America and he's used Islamophobia and the uh, Islamophobia to get where he is you know today and you look at Theresa May and you know the reason why Theresa May is a prime minister because she used the, refu the she's got an anti-refugee and a very Islamophobic stance she also got the Islamophobia Islamophobic person of the year award with the Islamic Human Rights Commission in 2015 so I'm con completely concerned about the racist Islamophobic rhetoric that's been being pushed by our uh, by our government and by our politicians I spent uh, most of today with you and you've told me several times that you've dealt with your father's death by campaigning and getting active but you live at the bottom of this road and you and your family have to pass by this spot um, where your dad was killed every day um, four years on how are you feeling <sighs> it's weird because it seems like yesterday um, and, and for me um, I really wish I was there that night. All my brothers and sisters do. I mean, we're always with dad. He always walks up and down. You just think it's safe because you lived here all your life. And to think that, you know, literally we just live there at the end of the street, that, you know, just a stone throw away, that someone could, you know, Nazis could arrive into your area and, and stab your father to death. It's just so impossible. And, um, 
you know, I campaigning is how I get through it personally, and you know, trying to make a. Um, you know the future generations live in a better world than where we are today and you know education is key dad always said knowledge is power education is key and that's what I'm trying to do in his memory um, because you know we don't class every white person as a terrorist as the white terrorist that killed my family but why are Muslims always classed as as terrorists when, when an alleged incident is, is done by an alleged Muslim